had uh, looked at the furrow irrigation method and uh, we had also mentioned that besides those three conventional methods which have uh, become very popular over last many, many centuries, the border irrigation, basin irrigation and uh, the furrow irrigation. Besides these two methods, uh, these three methods, there are some other methods which are uh, variations of these methods. They are also being used in some places where the situations warrant those methods to be applied, either because of the, the constraints, the financial constraints, or because of the constraints of uh, topography or the soil type or the soil depth, all those things put together. There are, uh, let's discuss two of those methods which uh, we had mentioned in the beginning. These are contour ditch method. And the other one is contour levy method. Let's first look at, in the case of contour ditch, what type of uh, layout we have and uh, what it is suitable and which type of situations. Now, this is the figure of a contour ditch irrigation method. You can see here that as there are uh, two ditches, this is one ditch, this is another ditch. So, what you have done is that you have laid the the ditches, some ditches, the size of the ditch can also vary uh, depending on how much is the, the stream size which is possible or which you want to use. These ditches are laid on the contours and then you while irrigating the area, you make the openings in the ditches and let the, the area be flooded. So, this is basically a method of wild flooding. This is a method of wild flooding in which you have ditches which can be spaced about uh, 20 uh, to 25 meters and we up, go up to 100 meters. The spacing between the ditches can be varying between 20 to 100 meters. That means the area which will be covering from this end to this end can be a, a wide area in case you have uh, the infiltration rates are lower. If the infiltration rates are higher, then you might restrict the width between the ditches. So, that is, that is up to the, you will have to look at many other conditions also, the soil type and then the slope. The slopes in these cases, again the slope variation can be quite excessive. You can use these, these method of uh, contour ditch um, on slopes which are as low as 0.15 percent or even higher slopes. But again, the restriction will be that what is the slope along with the soil type, which is not creating any erosion problems. And the stream size which you are going to use, they are, they are comparatively higher stream sizes. You are flooding the areas, you can afford to use the higher stream sizes if the areas are flatter areas. If the areas are steeper areas, you might reduce the stream size. So, in this uh, method, is not basically a a method which is a very sophisticated method. You are using this method because of the fact that you want to make use of the existing conditions and you do not want to indulge much expense which is uh, uh, involved in forming the area or grading the area. So, the adaptability if you look at where these methods uh, 
from the adaptability point of view, you will uh, find this method to be quite useful when you are talking in terms of foothills. Those areas which are lying on the foothills which are having slight undulations but not the slopes are not very steep, but at the same time you cannot afford to form these areas or relay these, these areas because of the fact that the soil depth is quite shallow. So if you try to reform these areas or you go in for the grading of these areas, you will find that the, the soil, the fertile soil will be lost. You might be having a very small depth which you cannot manipulate, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot grade that soil because of uh, the loss in fertility and as such the, the, the depth of soil available is very shallow. Then that is involving very low costs on those accounts because you do not need any. In this case, there is no land grading required. The ditches are also uh, unlined. So there also you can uh, save a lot of uh, uh, expenses. Then the labor expense is also not very excessive because the places at which you have to make the, the openings is, is not a very skilled thing with slight amount of experience. You will know that at what spacing because that will be a function of spread of the water up to which area the water can spread. So it is not a very scientific method, it is only a method which may be used under some circumstances where you uh, do not have any other uh, possibility of using the other method because of various reasons which we have just discussed. Let us quickly go down to the next method of contour levy. which again is quite similar in terms of uh, the previous method which we had discussed because in this case also you use this method where the situations or the conditions do not warrant any um, land grading or land shaping because of various reasons and in this method you are not using uh, the ditches but you are using the natural slope which is available, available in the area. So if you look at this, this is a strip, this is a strip which is not a parallel strip as you have in the case of uh, border. In the case of border irrigation, you are trying to make the strips parallel so that you can have a very uniform uh, flow over the strip. In this case, there is some, the the slope may be in this direction, there is a gentle slope. So you have tried to utilize that slope which is uh, uh, in this particular case the slope will be in this direction because you are supplying the water from some upstream end to the downstream end in this strip and this strip you have not, you have tried to use the contours, these are the natural contours which uh, uh, might be having some downslope because unless the slope is there you might find that the water might not move in, a, in the lateral direction, uh, in the longitudinal direction. So you have to have some slight slope otherwise the size of the stream will have to be very excessive. If the slopes are less, the lesser the slope to cover larger area you will have to have excessive stream size, but that can only happen if the soil type is, uh, is uh, conducive to that higher stream sizes. So in this case you have the ridges which are separating, which are going parallel to each other, not exactly parallel, but they are going along the, the strip and on this side you are having uh, uh, 
two ridges which are perpendicular, one ridge here, the other ridge at this location. So this channel can be used to collect the, the surplus water which may be used in the next strip. So this is again a method of flooding where you are not flooding uh, in the same manner as you are doing in the ditch, me in ditch method where the water was flowing along the ditch. In this case, the water is flowing at some field channel which is at the upstream end. So you release the water from there, it moves into this and then the surplus amount is collected, it might go to the next field. So as, as normally used where you have the field to field flooding. In areas where, uh, for example, the delta areas where you do not have any problem of uh, the amount of water available in our recovery delta region, we are using this method uh, where uh, you are letting the water flow from one area into another area and uh, with the consequence that most of the time the water might be standing there. So that is the reason that you are using uh, the paddy. The paddy crop is quite popular in those areas because paddy needs the, quite a lot of water and in this method you can provide that water because the water is coming from uh, one field going to the next field going to the next field and that continues and uh, this method can also be used for uh, other crops which are not very sensitive crops. Uh, for example, the grasses can be, uh, this method can be used. The other crops can be uh, fodder crops. Again, you can use this method. You might not have that continuous supply. You might have intermittent supply because the fodder uh, crops, again, they cannot uh, sustain that long uh, uh, inundation. So, the adaptability of this method, again, is quite similar that you are, uh, uh, you can use it for those areas where you do not have any, um, any um, availability of excess labor. The labor uh, costs are very less in this case. The otherwise, uh, uh, land farming cost can also be reduced by not uh, grading the areas. Even if there is some problem in terms of the levels, you might, uh, since the depth of water is quite excessive, so the distribution might not be uniform, but at the same time, uh, the, the distribution loss can be compensated by the, the amount of uh, uh, expense which is saved. So these methods are uh, not a general uh, purpose method, they are specific purpose methods where you can, uh, you can justify these methods in some conditions under some situations where either uh, the suitability or the economic conditions of the farmers or the type of crop which you are growing, they are the, the, the major uh, deciding factors. So with that, we will uh, conclude the, the methods which are surface irrigation methods as we have defined in the beginning. We will go down to the next class uh, of uh, irrigation methods which we were, which we had uh, started with. Along the surface irrigation method, we had said the subsurface irrigation method. In this category of uh, irrigation method, we are supplying water water is applied below the ground surface so this is the basic difference between the 
surface irrigation method and the subsurface irrigation method. In the case of surface irrigation method, we have seen that we are making use of the gravity flow, but the water is traveling over the surface of the, the uh, soil on the ground. Whereas in the case of subsurface irrigation, the water is not traveling over the surface of the ground, but is traveling within the, the ground surface and below the ground surface. Now, what kind of method this can be? If you just try to visualize, you will find that the typical, suppose this is your ground surface. Now, if you want to make the water, because the root zone depth we know, this is the root zone depth in which we are interested in. We want to supply moisture to the root zone depth, this area, because the, the plant root system is in this area and uh, because of that fact, this needs moisture. Now, in the case of subsurface irrigation, there is a way out that the possible solutions are that you either provide the, some sort of ditch. You have a ditch where you control the water. You have a ditch where you have, this is the water level. Now, this water level is under your control. What will happen if you maintain this water level here and if the groundwater table is somewhere down below, depending on what type of soil you are using, what type of soil is prevailing, there will be some flow from this area into this area. Some water will flow into the, uh, the zones. Again, it will be a function of how much water will flow, it will be a function of what is the wetness of the soil and what is the relative location of the groundwater table. If the groundwater table is very low, most of the water might go down, some water might go into the lateral direction as we have seen in the case of furrow irrigation. But this situation, uh, when you use the subsurface irrigation, we are basically using this irrigation when the groundwater table is already very, is quite high. You do not use this irrigation when the groundwater tables are very low because in that case, most of the water which will be making available in the ditches because this water has to be made available artificially. You have to bring this water from some supply source. This source can be either uh, the canal water or it can be the ground water which you have pumped and put into the channel system. It can be any, any source. So this, uh, the level which you have created here in the ditch and the level which is the ground water table, if the ground water table is somewhere here, you will find that after some time, there will be some level stabilization. If you keep on supplying this water, there will be some flow from the ditch into this area and the water table might come up locally. Now, this, this rise in water table is within your control. If you find, let me put this here again, that if I have a ditch which is a longer ditch, if I have, uh, this is the ditch. Now, in this particular case, by controlling the level of water, if my previous water table was, this is the water table which I have established after uh, a long, um, after controlling this level for a long period, you will find that this is not stabilized. 
the water will keep on moving on uh, this side and depending on the soil type, if the soil type is quite porous, this might be achieved relatively in a quicker manner. Now, if this is the, the level here which I have attained, it has become quite excessive. I can reduce this level by removing water from the ditch. This will come down. Initially, it will be like this. After some time, it might become this. And after some more time, it will, this will be achieved. This fluctuation is what is in your control. And that is what you do in the case of subsurface irrigation. The design parameters which you have to look at when you design the subsurface irrigation are what should be the spacing between the ditches. Is that will decide up to what level the water table when you, when you control these uh, levels of water in the ditches, how much time it will take for the water to drop down to the level, desired level, how much time, how quickly it will do that because that is a function of the soil type. What is the hydraulic conductivity of the soil? As that will decide the movement of the, soil, the water into the soil. So, depending on the soil type, you can design what should be the, the spacing between the, the ditches. You can also design, uh, the other parameters will be, what should be the depth of the ditch? That will give you the flexibility on up to what level you can control that uh, uh, the water depth. Then you can also decide on what should be the size of the ditch. So these are some of the, the parameters which you will uh, design. Now this is one option available that you have the ditches. If you want to choose another option which uh, is quite a, a usual option. You might replace these ditches with the circular pipes. You have this, instead of having the ditches, you can have underground pipes which are having uh, perforations. The water passes through these pipes and it gets, uh, it, it does the same job as uh, is being done by the ditches. In that case, you can save the area which is utilized by the ditches. So that much area can be saved. In this situation also, again, you will have to decide what will be the depth up to which you have to lay down the pipe, what will be the spacing between the, the pipes. and uh, what size of the pipe has to be used. So these are some of the parameters which will be needed to design the system, how the system should be laid out. And that will be also a function of what type of crops you are uh, utilizing. These methods, whether, is, uh, whether you are using the ditch or uh, whether you are using the perforated pipe, underground pipe, for the subsurface irrigation. In general, you will find that the suitability of this method is quite, is not uh, used at uh, many, many places. There are a lot of restrictions in the sense that you have to use this method where you have the water table is quite high, you cannot choose this method where the water tables are very low because as we have discussed that it can uh, lose a lot of water and as depopulation. You should use this method only when uh, the salinity is
is quite low because if the salinity is high then by what it does is that uh, since the water table in that area will be already very high now as you use this method the chances of uh, uh, evaporation because the water will be coming to the the top of the ground level because of the capillary rise as that is one of the way by which you are uh, your root system is getting water so if the salinity is very high the chances of uh, salts coming to the top of the soil is very high because of the evaporation from the soil so uh, you avoid this method when you have the low salin uh, the the high salinity in the water uh, then you you should avoid this method then is suitable when the uh, soil surface is as leveled because this method the type of control which you are talking about if the the, the area is having low slope then the ditches won't function very well especially in the case of ditches you are trying to have the ditches where the water is only being maintained with respect to the input which you are giving uh, into the ditch and the levels are maintained from one area to another area you don't make the water run uh, with velocity is only maintaining the levels of the water so most of the time you will uh, try to use this this method when the level the areas are very well leveled they are uh, flat areas and you are uh, you're not bothered about the flow of water because you are making the water they are all interconnected ditches so once you put the water in one location the water will automatically move into the other locations also and this uh, method is quite successful when you have that type of topography to give you an example this method is very successful in uh, holland in holland as you might be knowing that the holland uh, the general level is below the mean sea level so there uh, they are using a lot of dikes to uh, keep the sea waters away from their land and there for the floricultures the tulip cultivation is being uh, uh, being done using this method of the and uh, that's uh, the, the, the subsurface uh, irrigation method there you will find that the, the water table uh, is already excessively high so they are controlling the water in the ditch and maintaining that level either by pumping the water out of the ditch most of the time so that they can keep the level at a desirable level then uh, another uh, suitable uh, condition should be that the soils should be relatively porous so that you don't have to um, um, use very small spacing between the ditches your spacing got to have the spacing large enough you should have the soils which are porous soils so that the water can really travel fast within the the ground and it can uh, stabilize maintain that level which you are trying to uh, control so from those angles i think uh, you will uh, you will get a feeling that this method is again a method which is which has a lot of restrictions and it cannot be a method of uh, Uh, very usual nature it is a specific purpose method with a suitability only in those circumstances where you have these conditions met let's go to the the last class of method which we had uh, defined in the beginning that was pressurized irrigation 
question. Pressurized irrigation method. This method is in general is the one where you are uh, application of water as through pressure devices. And again, uh, as far as the distinction between the surface and subsurface is concerned, this method is in general a surface irrigation method. You are applying the water onto the surface of the land, onto the ground surface, whereas in some cases you might uh, find that, especially in the case of drip irrigation system, we will come to that. You might be supplying water not exactly on the surface, but maybe slightly below the surface, but that is again the level uh, um, is very small and that is for us with a specific purpose, but in, uh, even in that case it will be called a surface irrigation method. So between the first two categories, this will belong to the first category, or the only distinction that you are application application of water is through the pressure devices that means ultimately when it comes to the, the application stage is through the pressure device because of that requirement even the previous system the whole system you have to have under pressure otherwise you don't have any other means to provide that ultimate pressure at the application level so it becomes essential that you have the uh, pipes, the water will be flowing through the pipes, the source from the supply source, you will have to carry the water all the way under pressure so that ultimately when you come to the, the application level, you might use any type of device, but the water should be still under pressure so that you can supply that water under pressure. So that is the basic difference between uh, this method and the, the previous methods we have uh, uh, discussed. There are many different variations of uh, the specialized irrigation method. There can be uh, different uh, categories. They are either dependent on what type of uh, devices you are using or what is the order of magnitude of the pressure that is how the devices will also be um, varying. There are many, many classes of such systems, but the two which have become highly popular, we will uh, we'll, we'll discuss those and these are, first one is sprinkler irrigation system. And the other one is drip irrigation. <coughs> These two methods are the ones which are Basically, the basic reasons why this, this, these methods have come into uh, picture, why they have been, uh, uh, they are coming into being, is the scarcity of water. That was the basic reason uh, that people thought of different ways of uh, saving water, and by doing so, 
they felt that if they use the sprinkler irrigation, sprinkler irrigation in comparison to the drip method, the saving is not much. That is that has been found later on, but the intention was to save water. That was the first in intention, but uh, the drip irrigation is the further refinement of, uh, not the refinement, but uh, the further research into how you can save water in those circumstances where the water availability is a limited quantity and how you can make use of that limited quantity of water to get the maximum or the maximum yield per unit water. With that, with that uh, uh, objective, this method came into being. And Israel is the country where uh, the sprinkler irrigation as well as drip irrigation method has been, they have pioneered these, uh, the, the pressurized systems. And even now, I think they are one of the, the leaders in these two irrigation methods. Let's look at uh, these methods one by one. First, let's have a look at sprinkler choice. Sprinkler method. And this method, the water is supplied through the pipe network as um, we will, uh, we have said that ultimately the, the device for application to be used in this particular case is the sprinkler head. Now, the sprinkler head is a device which sprinkles the water. So the name suggests that it sprinkles the water over the, the surface of the, the ground. And you might have seen the sprinkler uh, uh, heads walking in some of the, the, the gardens these days, some of the, the lawns. And there are uh, sprinklers which are a very small uh, uh, sprinklers which can be used in the lawns, which can be used with the tap water which you are uh, getting in your uh, houses. So the, those, that device is called the sprinkler head. This device has a sprinkler head, which is nothing but the different types of sprinkler heads. It is a device which let the water go out. Since the water is under pressure, it goes out in the form of a jet, and that jet is broken with some mechanism, so that so that it gets distributed in different droplets. So that is the the basic philosophy of the sprinkler head. It it uh, disintegrates uh, a steam jet into smaller water particles and those water particles are sprinkled over the ground. You can either have a single nozzle head or you might have a, a double nozzle head where you have uh, two jets coming simultaneously and they are uh, distributing the water over the whole area. So this, this uh, sprinkler head, it rotates around its its axis in a circular, uh, with a circular motion. And that motion can also be changed, it can be fixed. So if you look at the plan, if you have a sprinkler head here, the spread of the sprinkler head will be a, a circular area. And if I look at the distribution, how much water has been distributed 
Now, this is the, the axis where I have located the sprinkler head. And that's the distance in both the both sides. The spread might be something like this. This is known as the distribution pattern. This is the distribution pattern of a single sprinkler head. Okay. So, when the sprinkler head will be sprinkling water in this total area, this is the, I have taken a section view um, at this level. Even if you take the section at this level, you might have a similar section. And this is what is the basic philosophy of what the sprinkler head does. Now, you might say that if this is the distribution of a single sprinkler head, then this is quite an uneven distribution. We, we started with thinking uh, of those methods by which we can have a a uniform distribution for the total field. For example, this was the field we had, uh, this was our root zone depth. We wanted a uniform distribution over this whole area. And in this, the surface irrigation method, we have seen that we cannot achieve this because of the fact that the water flows from the upstream end to the downstream end. And that's why there is uneven distribution because this gets more water, the upstream end uh, segment of the field gets more water than the downstream end. This can be avoided with the, with this uh, uh, sprinkler irrigation method. Now, in this case, what I want to do is, I want to spread my, if this is my total uh, longitudinal uh, direction, I might try to have the sprinkler heads spaced in such a manner that I get when I when I try to overlap each one has its own distribution pattern. The other one also has its own distribution pattern the third one and so on. When I look at the distribution pattern of the total combination, is the end result is the combination of all these distribution patterns and I might get something of this nature. Okay. So, is the overlap which is important that how each individual sprinkler head which is spaced uh, at some spacing, uh, that spacing is important. That spacing is what we are interested in knowing. That is part of the design. When you design the sprinkler uh, system, later on we will we'll see that there is something which we want to look into. What should be the spacing? Because that will be a function of what will be the distribution pattern. Distribution pattern can change with respect to the pressure, with respect to the nozzle size, and uh, these are the two major factors which will decide what will be the sprinkler, what will be the, the distribution pattern of a sprinkler head. But this is the basic philosophy. Similarly, this overlap, this is one overlap in one direction. The, let me let me put uh, the whole thing in plan. If I if I show the field in plan, now I might locate the sprinkler heads in such a way 
that this overlap which I am trying to look at, which will give me a good uh, distribution, uh, a uniform distribution, will have to be considered in both the directions. So, if I consider these two rows of uh, sprinkler nozzles and I, I look at the, the overlap of both these rows, then in, in both the directions I might, might get a good distribution uh, of water, which is the desired distribution. So, this is what is done that you are trying to trying to find out what is the now I'm, I'm drawing the, the pipeline for this field and plan again to achieve these these individual uh, sprinkler head distributions. I might have, uh, let me use another shade, I might have a one pipeline running here, another pipeline running here, and this might be the total layout of my pipeline, which is getting uh, which is connected to another bigger pipeline. Now, on each of these locations, I have, these are the nozzle heads which are located at some spacing. So, my design parameters will be, what will be the spacing between the nozzle head let me say L. What is the spacing between these two pipes? And each one, this is normally um, the nomenclature is this, this is called lateral. This is the lateral pipe on which you are installing these sprinkler heads. So, what is the spacing between the, the sprinkler heads? Why is the spacing between the laterals? That has to be decided on the basis of what is the distribution pattern of each individual sprinkler head and what spacings are needed to have a, a uniform distribution. That is what you do in the case of a sprinkler system. And then the other design parameters can be the sizes of these pipes and because that will depend on how much are the losses in terms of uh, the pressure variations because since we have uh, just mentioned that this, the distribution pattern will be a function of the pressure available. So, if the pressure drops very much, your uh, distribution pattern will be affected. So, all those things will come to later on, but at this stage we are just trying to see what is being done in this particular method. Now, having known this, let us look at the suitability of this method. What are the various conditions under which this can be suitable or uh, to f first of all, let us look at some of the advantages. which will also cover the conditions under which this method can be suitable. What will be the possible advantages? The first advantage is that you have complete control on the supply of uh, water. control and operation in terms of 
if you want to run the system for a very short period, you can afford to do in this particular method, which was not possible in the case of surface irrigation method. In the case of surface irrigation method, if you, it might not be feasible, but, but if you uh, are willing to apply a depth of 1 centimeter of water, it may not be possible. In, uh, in some soils, it may not be at all possible because while doing so, you might find that you have uh, created a lot of disparity in the, in the amount of water which have made, has been ultimately made available at the upstream end and the downstream end. Whereas in this case, you can run the system for a very short period and you can afford to apply any depth, any depth which you, you find feasible or you want to uh, uh, apply that depth onto a particular area, you can afford to do that. Then the other advantage is that you can use this uh, for very coarse soils where no other method is uh, suitable because if the, the soil is very coarse, now in this case you are not supplying the water from one end to the other end. Since it is coming as in the form of rain, as the rain comes, you can, uh, you can apply onto any type of soil whether it is uh, a highly porous soil or even if it is the other extreme where uh, you have very low infiltration rates. In that case, what is needed? If you, if you have very low infiltration rates, if you use a conventional uh, surface irrigation method, you might find that most of the, the water is getting lost in the form of runoff. Whereas in this case, you can, you can afford to reduce the, the supply the, the, the design can be made in such a way that the rate of input or the rate of application can be reduced. And over and above that, you can have more intermittent irrigations. You can, you can have more frequent irrigations, which is not possible with the other method. So in this case, you can have uh, this method suitable for very coarse soils as well as very fine soils. And if, if it comes to that situation, but at the same time, if the amount of uh, water uh, which is, uh, or the, the, the level of application is very high, then I think it is not worthwhile going in for this method. Because if the, if the level of water application is very excessive, then it is better to flood the area. Then, uh, going in for such a method. Then in this case, you do not, no need of any leveling. So the land leveling, you can use this method for uh, undulating areas where no other surface irrigation method is, is uh, possible or is useful you can use this method because in this case you don't have any problem of uh, uh, the terrain as the application the rate of application in your <coughs> is in your hand you can wait for the soil to be dry so that next time when you uh, apply the irrigation water there is no surface runoff but in the beginning the infiltration rates will be high so unless you have reached a steady state infiltration rate uh, you will find that most of the time in most of the soils, the infiltration rates will be comparatively higher. So in this method, you can afford to make use of those um, advantages and you do not, the, the mere fact that the leveling is not required, that is a big boon. So with that, I think we will stop here today and we will, uh, in the next class, we will continue with this and go on to the next method of drip irrigation. Thank you.